Okay, so um, yeah, it's going to be quite a cozy small session today, although actually people are arriving in the meantime. Um, but um, we are just going to kick off and um, have a little chat about the videos that you watched with two actresses from Hungary about their ideas um, on how culture can play a role in um, you know, implementing the European Green Deal. Hmm, maybe I should have waited a bit more. Yeah. We're getting more people now. Um, so yeah, again, today's topic is culture's role in, in um, driving sustainable transition in Europe and specifically implementing the European Green Deal. Um, so I guess, well, I'm gonna pass it on to uh, Desi. But I think, I guess what we start off with is sort of just a discussion on what you thought about the interviews and we can reflect a bit more on the previous um, video as well that you watched, to what extent you feel that the European Green Deal is clear to you or you still have some questions um, and whether you, you know, agree or not that those are the best ways to go forward that were mentioned in the videos or you have you know, different opinions and ideas. Um, but yeah, over to you, Desi. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy that we were able to meet again. And I hope that you enjoyed the video also. And thank you, Mate, for passing the mic to me. So I would like to ask um, who would like to uh, start the discussion and what were the main thoughts uh, regarding the video that you had? So who would like to share first? I can go if you want. <laughs> and um, what can I say? Well, we, we mentioned this last time, but the fact that New Kimba House is really more related to culture. And that was my doubt, like the first meeting we had about the EU Green Deal. But I have to say the truth, after the uh, videos, it's, it, I mean, it, how can I say, my perspective changed about this. I mean, I understood that we can um, translate the main principle of a Green Deal in, in, in practices in the cultural sector. And I really appreciated the interviews, especially the second one, uh, because I think the first one was okay, but uh, she mentioned basically things that more or less we think, like uh, using um, reusable materials, uh, creating uh, artworks that can deliver a message, so something that we know more or less, but it was Curious for me, the second one about the green theaters and the fact that really focusing on uh, green spaces uh, or, you know, uh, local spaces that people care so they can really, um, I mean, we can really behave to protect that environment. And also I love the part, uh, the last part actually about the theater and the young people uh, that can be scared and the concept of positive, uh, you know, catharsis, uh, you know, leaving the um, people, giving people a positive final message, not uh, like we are dying to, to incentivize uh, people. So that's my impressions. <laughs> Nicola, thank you so much. I really do appreciate your words. And it was such an honor actually to take the interview with these very, very active actresses. I mean, like they were so smart. Uh, Eva, maybe would you like to react to Nicola or to the video? Um, can you hear me? Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, I um definitely uh, definitely agree with what Nicola just said because what I also thought was interesting interesting was that um this whole topic of climate anxiety or the lack of that um was also some uh, something which 
if I recall it right, was something we talked about in the last uh, session at the end a bit, because um, um, like um, even the the European Green Deal is, as previously said, not really something you can just like the new European Bauhaus um, implement in any art form um, because it's an, it's a project in itself. Um, that um, this is uh, something um, you can really work with. Um, and also um, with the, uh, this example of hiking theater, um, really something you can work with. And also um, just, I don't know, um, so that this isn't just uh, something where you tell people you have to do this and this and this, which um, also was a part uh, was in the first part of the video, but that you actually show something that can be done um, to also inspire people to maybe have other ideas. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate your pointer to you too. Mar, what do you think? You were the one actually raising the climate anxiety the, uh, at the other session. What were you thinking? I, I mean, I was so happy when you raised that question, actually, right? Because I knew the, the video and the interview that, that I made with the actress. What were your thoughts when you were watching the video? Mark, can you hear us? If not, then maybe Charles, did you watch the interviews? Would you like to share your thoughts with us? Um, yes, yeah, sure. Um, thanks for thanks for the video. First of all, it's a really, really interesting uh, set of interviews. Wait, let me maybe I can put on my camera. It's a bit more uh, nice. Um Yes, I, I was very uh, interested also with regarding this, the what what Nicola said this distinction between the new urban Bauhaus, which is you know very directed towards culture, and the European Green Deal, which has uh, which is much more wide ranging. And I had the um, uh, I was really interested in what the, the second uh, interviewee uh, mentioned with regards to also finding you know uh, taking this very material approach or should i say a uh, very sort of um, um you know thinking about like using uh less uh, material in the process of creating that sometimes can also really push us to uh push us to push the boundaries of of uh, creative boundaries of for instance uh, if you create a theater play and you don't you know you might want to even question the the building of being in a theater and then this whole process of also uh, going on the on the um, on the trail to to create art. So I think that was really uh, really interesting to really rethink the the very conditions and infrastructures that are required for one's art to emerge. Um, that was very interesting. Thank you so much, uh, Hugo. Are you here? Would you like to share your thoughts on the video before going to the next uh, topic that I would like to raise for us? I think I will take this as I know maybe they don't have a good internet connection, oh. which which can happen. So but, I hope uh, that I, they will be back. Ugo, are you there? Because I, I hear you bad, uh, Demi. Okay. Or maybe it's you <laughs> that you have a, a bad connection. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Do you do you all hear Demi well? Okay, so that's me. Ugo, Martin, are you there? <laughs> okay, my friend. I don't know if, uh, hmm, trying to but I can't. Okay. Um, until, um, Anyway, Hugo and Mar, if you um, want to jump in with some points, feel free to just, uh, you know, unmute or 
just raise your hands and we'll come back to you. I actually had a question which I wanted to ask you, um, as in like all of you. Um, I think what was quite interesting and something we like discussed a bit with uh, Desi and Rebecca was that it became quite evident. We didn't really want to put our like interviewees into the position of like directly, you know, facing them with the question like, hey, do you actually know about the European Green Deal? But it's it's becoming quite evident that, um, you know, a lot of people are aware about climate change and, you know, maybe even that the European Union is doing something about it. But actually, very few people are aware of the European Green Deal itself and what are its main like areas or, or what it is really. And I don't know if that's a problem. It's certainly a problem or issue of like visibility for the EU itself, but I don't know. My question is, do you think it's enough that um, people in the cultural sector are not necessarily very familiar with what the European Green Deal itself is? Do you think it's enough if you know they are in general concerned and active in the field of climate change? Or do you think that actually, well, the European Green Deal is Europe's like main plan for implementing sustainable transition? So people in the cultural sector who want to do anything about climate change should be more aware of it and sort of, you know, directly forming some sort of collaboration with the EU. I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on that. You will go last, so I will let you go first. Um, if, if I may, uh, maybe, uh, I mean, for sure, the, the knowledge of this kind of very, you know, broad and, and uh, sometimes also a bit complex uh, regulations it's not really like a regulation but this kind of uh, of text uh, uh otherwise we wouldn't i guess we wouldn't be here we wouldn't need like uh um partnerships such as such as cake to like educate also people about that but um the 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 thing in europe is that you have you know the the i would say the administration is very very strong and so there's a lot of like uh, money or um um how do you say like grants or subsidies that are um marked by uh europe europe and even national subsidies some or grants are sometimes uh constrained by uh eu wide rules so i think um sooner or later people will have to because there are now more and more like uh, uh, um, ecological conditionality to getting you know subsidies and stuff like that i think uh sort of naturally uh people who are seeking for uh, for instance eu funds which in the cultural sector is very uh very uh common they will have to get to know these these tools and uh, uh either getting to know them like directly or we'll have to deal with you know the consequences of these rules uh and when they draft like a proposal or something like that so um yeah Thank you. Nicola, do you have any thoughts that you would like to add, maybe share, reject for Matthew's question? I'm sorry, guys, but I didn't understand the question because of my connection. So <laughs> I don't know if you can see that there's something moving, <laughs> but if you, if you can repeat, maybe I can say something. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Sorry, I'll try to summarize. I was basically asking the cultural organizations and the people who work in them need to be aware directly of the European Green Deal, you think? Or is it okay if they have just a general awareness about climate change and what needs to be done about that? Well, maybe it's <clears throat> having knowledge of European Green Deal is also a way to have urgence in doing things because yes, you are aware, but you know, European Green Deal uh, set specific deadline for for the maybe it can be an incentive to uh, to act like rapidly and concretely in doing things. So I think this is one of the main thing actually because then European Green Deal is very broad and so it's not the European Bauhaus is something broader. So I think it's really the sense of urgency that can be provided of this program can be helpful for 
developing projects that are more sustainability oriented. Thank you, Nicola. I do agree with uh, your thoughts. Um, if you don't mind, if there's no other uh, people who would like to talk right now about this, then I will react to you. At first, I thought it's a huge problem. Like, I will be honest, I thought that, oh my gosh, where I will find an actress or a singer or anyone, an artist, like a painter who knows anything about the European Green Deal. And when I found these people, they were so active, they knew so much, and they, it, all the knowledge that they had, it was an indirect knowledge, uh, but they were doing actually what is the purpose of the European Green Deal, and they have proposed great ideas. I was not leading them on with questions. I really let them talk about themselves, talk about what they like to do, how and what are their dreams, and it was connected so nicely to our project. So I got all fired up about this, I have to be honest, and I'm very happy that I, I, I was able to share these interviews with you because to hear after the first session that for example you Nicola had the change of mindset regarding this yeah I feel like okay then we, we were doing something great now so thank you guys uh is there any other thoughts because you said, today... oh sorry I will let you react no, no sir you said they uh, knew indirectly of this European Green Deal do you use the word indirect? Oh, or sorry. Indirect. One of them was direct because uh, she was also okay. studying international relations, like me, my, my first degree. Yeah, the the so she no, yeah. But mm -hmm. the first one, no, no, no thought about it, no knowledge. I was not yeah. even really telling her that maybe she should get ready. You know, I was not sending her PDF documents. Uh, she was just telling her life, what she does on a small level, on a personal level, in groups, what the theater does and what can be done by her. So what what, what the group of friends, they are doing like the project. Yeah. This is good because actually the cake should aim at uh, really addressing these topics with directly with people, professionals in the sector. So I think it's good that we included these people and we make them know the project also, so we can really easily follow all the next steps. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting. Like. Desi pointed out, but also like if you remember in the interview, there was the specific example of um, what was it, a 10 million trees in Hungary, the initiative. And, you know, she might not actually know that, you know, for instance, biodiversity promotion and, you know, the actual support that the EU gives for it as part of the European Green Deal, but she's aware of similar um, initiatives. So in that sense, you know, I agree with the point that perhaps it's enough if they don't actually get into the details of like big international agendas and what have you on the other hand you know i did my studies in the uk and with brexit happening not so long ago i also saw the perspective of what happens when actually in the media the european union has been used very much so as a punch bag or sort of like a scapegoat to like blame blame for stuff when something went wrong in, in um, UK politics. And at the same time, people weren't really aware of all the positive stuff that the European Union was doing for them. So even though, and it's the same case in Hungary, so many like roads and schools and whatever are financed by European sources, but people are not really aware of, you know, what is the EU? It's this like weird, supranational thing and i think desi pointed to this in her like initial presentation as this weird supranational organization which is a bit difficult to get our heads around and it's easy to miss like oh what what is the eu actually doing so on that level i think i would argue that in fact it would be important especially for cultural organizations wanting to work in europe on climate change to be more aware of the european green deal itself as opposed to just climate change in general.
happy market. So interesting. That we kind of uh, we had the same point of view at the beginning, and now we differ, right, at the beginning of the project. But I understand your point of view too. Actually, I was thinking that because you were actually watching the video, I wanted to propose a shorter meeting today, like how Mate did the other day. So now I will ask you guys if you would like to finish in. 15 minutes maybe and there's going to be one last topic to discuss if that's okay with you if you all agree yes <laughs> so we were okay. talking about theaters green theaters hiking theaters and there are examples in hungary and you also heard examples of that and then now i want to raise the other part of the video interview that was very interesting to me which is the climate anxiety and another one which is not connected but could be the private and corporate sector like the agencies and the movie sector so which one either if you have um, thoughts on both then i'm happy if you share if you only have a a uh, comment on one topic that's okay too but i think that that is also important to talk about the young people because really sustainable development is really all about children and future generation um personally i i don't know about the film industry so i'm not uh, an expert so maybe i, I would go for the yeah, second topic the anxiety and young people but i don't know if you want to address this i mean i'm interested in but i, I don't know if i can provide any uh, you know thinking i'm actually interested in the film in the film industry because that's where i work but um i'm not sure i understood the question also so Sorry, what I meant to say was uh, in the interview, you have heard that the film industry, like an agency, the one delivering the movies, they can um, produce in a green way, right? Or either they can kind of um, um, help to other organizations, uh, green organizations with dom uh, donating money. So what do you think about these ideas uh, which were in the interview introduced by the actors herself? Okay, um, I think we're we're still choosing the topic, right? Sorry, can you repeat? I don't hear you very well. I was saying um, we're still choosing the topic, so I don't know if I should answer directly to your question, but uh, maybe the other response to pitch in. Let's go. Okay, let's sorry. go this topic. Everyone kind of just froze for me, but if I think if you have opinions or on either of them, feel free to go ahead. Um, basically, how like the film industry, but I guess also more generally the the, the cultural sector can contribute to um, you know tackling climate change through similar initiatives that you heard in the video. But also, if you have different you know suggestions, then it would be great to hear about that. Um, but um, maybe I can uh, say a bit about that because it's um, uh, of of course there's the there's this in the film industry you have this distinction between like the what we call the eco production side of things so it's basically when you have a shoot it's you know uses le using less resources it's uh, running on um, renewable energies uh, making sure that you're not having like empty trucks running around because you know a shoot can be like very very uh, energy intensive and sometimes you need to shoot very far away so taking these can these things into account so that's that's the side of like really the the sort of material impact of of a film and then there's from what i understand from your question it's also having other uh in influence into society through the, through the films themselves and here there's i would say there's also another two levels uh because you've got like for instance what we call impact films so pretty films that deal with a topic it's very often um um uh, for instance documentaries or uh films like that can also be fictions about like you know whistleblowers about like a uh, certain environmental catastrophe or whatsoever and then the the film really its message uh is really directed at you know uh, uh raising awareness or 
or engaging you know people into acting towards a certain uh, goal or, or regarding a certain cause and and then th the other level which i think is actually very interesting is the it's how you know the film it's very visual and it shows people living in a certain way and then uh these lifestyles uh, are very can have a lot of influence in the people that are um watching a film and i guess it's also could be the same in theater uh and so for instance if the hero of the film is you know i don't know it can be very simple or basic example like taking a bike instead of like taking a car taking a train instead of taking a uh, a plane these kind of ideas which do not really interfere the core of the creative process or the the story or the you know the emotions that are conveyed by the film or the series or whatever um so that's that would say that's the third level which is more um subtle um but also I think which has like a lot of effects and of course it's sort of like combine each other because you can have um, uh, a film which is produced uh, in a green way which talks about like a very direct uh, ecological uh, or environmental uh, issue which also you know uh, in which also the you know the characters travel by trains <laughs> by plane uh, so it's not they're not mutually exclusive obviously and so there, but there are these three levels of like impacts, I would say. Thank you so much. It was really interesting to hear your point of view as kind of a professional who, who works in the field. I was kind of, I, I really wanted to hear a, a very personal point of view in this uh, matter. Is there anyone else who would like to speak about this or should we jump to the last topic, which is really the climate anxiety uh, that uh, youngsters, the younger generation can feel. I, I would actually quite like us to, to sit for a moment yeah, with what Char said about, um, I don't know, perhaps I would phrase it as like the values that the movie or the cultural production that could be a, you know, theater production or a, even a, a visual art piece, sort of values that the art piece implicitly promotes, because oftentimes it's not quite as explicit as in the case of a documentary. But, you know, just think about the example of someone having a good time, someone wanting to treat themselves because they just had a really tough period and they want to have a big party. And what is that associated with? Like most of the time it's associated with extreme consumerism, like the idea of having a good life or treating ourselves is, is very much tied up with, you know, or like smoking a cigarette, looking cool, like all these little things which are almost like unnoticeable because they are so like common and, you know, every day that um, I think it's it was quite a good point, um, you know, to think more consciously about these these things in films which are not actually directly about climate change. Um, and whether this could really be uh, an area for for culture to go in, in terms of, you know, climate change and thinking related to productions more consciously about, about the values that we sometimes unknowingly promote. Well, this is a great point, actually. I never thought of this. <laughs> about, for example, the cigarettes thing. And yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I think yes. I think yes. Yeah, I kind of see it like in the interview when with the first woman, when she said that being an actress, she had to constantly be using new makeup and new looks. Like she couldn't repeat the same outfit because it was just something that you didn't do. And she was asking why. Yeah, thank you so much for your thoughts. I really do appreciate. Uh, do you also want to speak? Sorry about the little noise. I'm kind of on a, a trip right now. We were in Brussels, and right now I am moderating this uh, from a bus. Okay, so sorry about that. Everyone tries to be very quiet. They are lovely, but you don't like the noises. So thank you for picking up with me. Uh, should we talk about the climate anxiety of youngsters? Especially, Mar, I would really like to hear your thoughts because you were the one raising this uh, question, this topic uh, at our first uh, session of European Green Deal. And then the second actress, 
talks about that a little bit. What were you able to connect with her, with her message of not scaring youngsters with the climate change, not making them depressed? What do you think about that? Well, uh, gotta say that I uh, don't remember very well what, what she said because I'm not good at remembering stuff at all. But uh, I do agree with the message of not uh, claiming the apocalypse because when we jail, the apocalypse is coming. We do nothing. We just wait for the end. When we say that a better future is possible, but we have to work for it. That's how we prepare. That's how we aim for action because we are telling people that we can do something. I think that also wrapping with, with sorry for the noise, I'm in an office. Um, what, what we say before about people knowing about the European Green Deal is that we must try our best to educate ourselves, to know, to get info. And at the same time, we must forgive ourselves if we are not perfect. We must always try to be better, but we must accept that we will never be perfect. And that's a way that me and my group deal with the anxieties and complications of the world. And we accept that we try to do good stuff but at the same time we are people with lives and life is difficult so we may fuck up sometimes but that's okay we just have to forgive to learn and to be better Thank you so much. I'm very happy that you were also able to okay, share okay. your point of view. Nicola, do you want to react? I, I can't wait to meet you. <laughs> really, I want to have like face-to-face -face conversation. <laughs> well, we'll we will have that chance in Italy. Yeah, yeah. But I what I can add is that, yeah, there is this anxiety, but I'm, for example, I'm optimistic because of a human being that is always been really, uh, how can I say, human being find solution. Okay, we'll find the solution for this. But the problem is that we cannot wait that like, like as always for the last minute in this case. So I think that one of the message that culture should uh, transmit is that this time there is no this. Okay, we'll do this because we can do it. Of course, we'll do it. I'm pretty sure about this because when human beings go together, find a solution, they do it. But it will be too late, like if we behave as usual. So I think that's a key message like be optimistic, but do it. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Um, I think that's actually quite a good closing thought. Um, I don't know how you feel about it. I don't want to oppress or suppress any, I don't know, ideas that you might have still in your heads and can't wait to share <laughs> with the others. Um, if you have something, please feel free to jump in. Yeah. Um, but if not, I think that's us for today. I'm going to send out the link to the recording again. Um, and don't forget, of course, on Monday, we will have our final session with two very exciting panelists, one professor from the University of Bologna and a former member of the European Parliament who was active during the drafting on the European Green Deal. So you can ask all your questions to them. The way it's going to look like is that First, the professor is going to give like a 15 to 20 minute presentation um, about the European Green Deal to get really more into the evaluation and analysis of it. And then um, the member of the European Parliament uh, or former member will um,
have about five to 10 minutes to react to this and also in the process of how the European Green Deal is drafted. And then actually most, most of the session is going to be dedicated to Q&A. So we really count on your active participation and we, we wanted to leave most of the session um, to be more interactive and um, you know move from the Green Deal to also how the cultural sector can contribute it and think together about that. So about yeah. The, about this, yeah. please, since it, it looks really interesting, spam, spam emails like tomorrow and I can spam another email on Monday morning <laughs> because yeah. I mean, I, I, che I checked the participation uh, list and basically there are only people that are not in Lake Cake and this is so weird to me. So let's try yeah, to, we'll, to spam. Yeah, we will send it out to um, other projects as well that we are involved in. I'll actually do that today. But um, I'm, I'm positive. Last time we also advertised um, a meeting fairly late-ish for the ITM and we had actually quite a good turnout. So, so I'm sure that we'll manage. And um, okay. so don't forget you need to register, but actually once we got the Zoom link, I can also send that out directly to people, which will make it easier for people to jump in. So yeah, okay. thanks a lot again. Actually, okay. I'll stop the recording.